Hi, everyone. I hope everybody can see my screen. Yes, we do. All right. So I'm Maria Aufschlager. Thank you for the introduction. I'm currently writing my master thesis at the GFZ in the Department Earth System Modeling and, as you said, regarding deep learning for retrieving terrestrial water storage from spaceborne gravity observations and satellite altimetry. As everybody, I will motivate the topic, why it is an essential task to understand terrestrial water storage. I will talk about widely used data products um, that are used so far for retrieving terrestrial water storage and which we used in the study. I will explain the schematically what kind of downscaling neural network got set up and trained and show that it can correctly de derive terrestrial water storage. So why is quantifying terrestrial water storage so important? Terrestrial water storage is an important, important component of the global hydrological cycle. And therefore, uh, understanding as well its sensitivity to climate change is very crucial. Furthermore, it's a key determinant of water availability and an indicator for droughts and floods. So monitoring and quantifying its changes um, will, for example, aid water management, ecosystems, and agriculture. Other than these direct motivators, terrestrial water storage and its uh, downscaling products are used in numerical hydrological models. So, consequently, to improve uh, simulated terrestrial water storage can as well improve the models it's being used at. Furthermore, Terrestrial water storage occurs heterogeneous and seasonal. So to get its temporal and spatial variations right um, at a reasonable resolution is very much needed. I said there's, of course, already a bunch of data products out there that are being used to um, retrieve terrestrial water storage already for decades, one of which being the Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment Satellite Mission, aka GRACE and its follow-on mission, GRACE follow-on. Even though GRACE and its follow-on mission provide global gravity observations since 2002, so um, it makes a large data stream available, terrestrial water storage retrieved from GRACE, as you can see, exists just in very coarse spatial and temporal resolution, uh, um, about 300 kilometers resolution. On the other hand, we do have satellite altimetry. Um, which is used to observe rivers for several years. And with an increase of technology, there is a constant increase of altimetry observation. Nowadays, entire river systems are being recorded. But even though it is the most precise and in situ uh, observation available, it just exists, as you can see, uh, very patchy. As mentioned before, there are as well numerical hydrological models simulating terrestrial water storage. Here in the study, uh, the land surface discharge model is being used. It is regularly simulated and features small scale patterns as well as rivers, but as every model, it is biased and it is especially for high resolution known to overestimate rivers. My approach now is to combine the advantages of spaceborne gravity and altimetry observations with the aid of numerical modeling through the tool of deep learning. To aim for an artificial neural network that is capable of deriving terrestrial water storage anomalies just from grace like observations and in a future outlook to move more and more away from the model world. So how did I set up a deep learning algorithm? This is a continuation of the published paper by Dr. Ilgang. Um, he already showed successfully a downscaling of terrestrial water storage to a half degree grid. And in a similar fashion, I created a convolutionary neural network for downscaling TWS. To, as a first step, uh, um, syn synthetic grace observations had to be created, and we created them from LSDM fields. 
monthly mean scope calculated from daily LSTM results and a Gaussian filter with a radius of three, 600 kilometers got applied for this typical spatial smoothing um, of GRACE data. Then a convolutional neural network got set up and trained. Uh, here a supervised training um, scheme is used and it is based on pairs of synthetic GRACE observations on a half degree grid as an input layer and their corresponding simulated terrestrial water storage fields on a eight degree higher resolution grid as an output layer. As typical for this kind of neural networks, um, I do have convolution and pooling layers. These extract recurring spatial features from the input layer and pass these through a series of artificial neurons to the output layer. These neurons are linked through weighted neural connections. During training, these weights of neural connections are adapted by minimizing a loss function, which measures the error between the current uh, CNN downscaling and the simulated target from LSDM. With this scheme, I already have set up my first model, which so far is just based on LSDM data. So the next step uh, is to integrate altimetry records. To realize that, a custom loss function got introduced to incorporate the altimetry observations. The loss function is constructed in a data assimilation scheme combining two mean square error terms, as you can see in the formula, um, between the neural network downscaling, the LSDM target values, and the altimetry records. With this, the uh, neural network is now constrained by altimetry observation and gets corrected towards the observations. Thereby, the CNN is now able to self-validate and adapt the training process, not just based on the model values, but on actual observations as well. To stay within the terminology of data assimilation, we call this the constraint trained model. With this uh, neural network, uh, unseen data pace for the year 2019 are downscaled and altimetry records are again used as an independent measure to quantify the performance of the neural network. So let's inspect the actual results of the downscaling. Here I um, show selected months uh, for the downscaling and the target values of the year 2019. On the top row you can see target values simulated by the LSDM for 2019. In the bottom row, um, the terrestrial water storage anomaly is downscaled by the neural network with the constraint. From left to right, you see the months displaced of March, June, September, and December. First of all, the downs downscaling shows close resemblance to the target values of the LSDM and from small scales to large scales. So, Weaker patterns, but large scale patterns are correctly uh, assembled as well as strong small scale features and rivers. I want to point out in the north, the Orinoco, who is perfectly shown, and uh, the Amazon River with its connecting rivers, and even in the south, the Parana. Furthermore, the annual cycle of the South American terrestrial water storage is reproduced. So I'm showing already, and I'm uh, capable of downscaling accurately. Um, to terrestrial water storage, and not just from a half degree grid, but even to an eight degree grid. For additional comparison, I calculated the annual correlation and the explained variance between the LSDM and the constrained neural network downscaling. For the correlation, you can see majorly high values especially in the tropical regions around the Amazon region, values of more than 0.85 are found. This is uh, probably because of large groundwater basins and rainfalls, which cause strong signals, so and thereby can be more easily uh, retrieved. In more temperate climate in the south and in arid regions, we can find lower and even negative correlation values. 
a similar pattern we can see for the explained variants, which makes sense. So uh, I do have more than 0 0.9 explained variants uh, for the tropical regions and in the south arid regions um, up to zero. For uh, firmer uh, um, performance evaluation, the altimetry observations serve as an independent validation for the downscaling. Here I show the monthly root mean square error um, between the altimetry based surface water storage anomalies and the LSDM forward simulated in black. Uh, the neural network downscaling after unconstrained uh, training in orange and the downscaling after constrained training in blue throughout the year of 2019 again. Uh, the uh, most important points we um, can describe from this plot are that the constrained training improves the downscaling ability by 10% and even up to 35% as it is emphasized in the right plot. Moreover, the performance of the neural network downscaling um, is evaluated by its ability to explain the variance of altimetry records in 2019. Here, just grid points are considered that have a complete time series set of 2019 available. Um, which are 226, out of which 70 had positive values, and I show here. Again, in black, the explained variance by the LSDM, in orange, by the unconstrained trained neural network, and in blue, the downscaling with constraint training. It's immediately visible that the highest values uh, are kept by blue color, so by the constraint trained neural network meaning that the constraint trained uh, convolutionary network shows the best performance to explain the variance of altimetry observations. And these are already the main achievements, and I would like to sum up um, what is important to take away. So um, the neural network with constraint training scheme is able to combine numeric hydrological models and local real-world observations. Out of this performs an accurate downscaling from coarse gravity field observations, even to a higher re resolution than ever before to an uh, eighth degree resolution. The validation with independent altimetry records has shown that the constraint training scheme improves downscaling by 10% and even up to 35%. Uh, for the future, uh, we are trying to add more complexity to the data structure to and thereby to the training process um, that reassembles more the structure of actual GRACE products to, as mentioned uh, in the very beginning, more and more move away from the model world towards real world observations. Thank you very much. And do you have any questions? Thank you very much, Maria. That was very clear, very clear demonstration. So I don't see any, let me, um, okay. I don't see any, oops, wrong page. I don't see any questions in the chat at the moment. Yes, mm. seems that, there, no, there isn't. Okay, so I have a, I have a question. So did you try to, um, to add external um, predictors? I mean, like, external forcing or predictors like, uh, I don't know, the topography that you would have in the training or, or the catchment areas or with something more specific that you would add to the data and uh, when training for the downscaling? No. So the, um, as shown, the only thing uh, going into the training is um, the LSDM forward simulation, yeah. the smoothed out forward simulation as an input layer and altimetry records. Okay. And you're so able adding to more see, yeah. data is for sure um, a future task. Okay. Okay, but but I mean, they, uh, I guess there are some uh, fields that are that drives actually the uh, the model, the LSDM the model, and that you could 
you know, use that pred as predictor directly to the uh, to the training for the training. Well, the LSDM uh, is mainly there to train the physics that I don't have uh, with the mm -hmm. um, observation yeah. uh, from Grace. Okay. Um, so no, no other questions, I guess. Nope. 